Okay, this video is going to demonstrate how to model the part called the index feed uh, in the inventor class that we have here. Um, it's going to be, this, this part revolves around placing features using placed features. Specifically, there are going to be three chamfers that are placed and then one counterboard hole that are placed. So the three chamfers are this 15 16 by 30 degree chamfer on the back here this chamfer along the front here that has the 40 degrees here and then this shorter one here in the 50 degrees those are our three placed features that are chamfers the other placed feature is this one hole right here you'll see it's a half inch drill with a three quarter inch counter bore that's three eighths of an inch deep so we're going to model this with one extrusion it'll have three placed uh, chamfers and then one placed hole there so in order to do this, we'll go ahead and get into Inventor and create a new part file. And I'm going to start the front sketch on the XY plane. And just like always, we model this approximately the correct size and shape. So I'll come in here and I'll start my sketch here and just get it kind of modeled approximately the right size and shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but the better you can get it here just makes your job a little bit easier in the long run. Okay, so there we go. There's our outside. I need to add some constraints to this because you notice if I pick this up, I can move it. Okay, so I'm going to say I need like a vertical constraint, for example, between the end point of that line and the center point. I need a horizontal constraint between the end point of that line and the center point and now I can come in and add my dimensions so it's three and a quarter inches long and the overall height is one and nine sixteenths and then we can start adding in you know some of these other dimensions so I got a three sixteenths here uh, and then from here to here is one and a quarter This is three quarters. Um, this distance here is one and a quarter. And this distance is five eighths. So now we are fully constrained. I can finish this sketch and extrude it. Um, I'll extrude it two and a half inches. Choose OK. So now looking at this, if we compare this with the model that we have, I need to cut off this. The first chamfer I'll place will be this 15 16 by 30 degree chamfer on the back. We're going to use the chamfer command here. And remember, the chamfer command has a few different modes. It has a distance mode, and then it has a distance and angle mode. And since I have the angle, that's the mode that I need to use. I can change my distance here to 15 sixteenths, 9375, and the angle is 30 degrees. So it's going to ask you, you know, how far back from the corner, that's the distance, and then from that face, you know, the angle that you want to go down. So notice that face is selected here, so I can select my face, and then I can pick my edge. And what it's doing here is it's saying, measuring back that distance, 15 sixteenths, and then this angle here is 30 degrees. So if I come in here and I say OK on that, notice now that it's got that corner cut off. The second one that I'm going to do is the one that goes across this way. And if we look at the picture again, you'll see that the picture, it gives us this quarter inch distance, but it actually doesn't get, give us the information that we need. What I need to know is how far are we cutting this off. So you kind of have to do a little math. If I add one quarter and one and a quarter, I get two and a half, and then subtract that from three and a quarter, which is my overall width, it'll give me the distance that I need to cut off here. Okay, so again, one quarter and one and a quarter is two and a half. I subtract that from three and a quarter. So three and a quarter minus two and a half is one and three quarters. So that's how long this part is that needs to get cut off. Then the other part is the angle. 
It shows the angle here is 40 degrees, but I'm actually chamfering this part down here, which has an angle of 50 degrees. So my distance is 1 and 3 quarters. My angle is 50 degrees. Coming back here, we'll go to the chamfer command. My distance is 1 and 3 quarters. My angle now is 50 degrees. And I can pick my face is that one. The edge that I want to chamfer is that one. So notice it's coming back 1 and 3 quarters and an angle of 50. And it's going to cut that off. And I'll say OK. So again, now if I compare this to the picture that we have here, you can see how they're very much the same. Okay. The final one is this front chamfer here. It also has a distance of 1 inch and an angle of 50 degrees, but it's a, just a partial chamfer, 3 16 And this, is, this can be the part that um, can be a little bit frustrating as to getting this chamfer in exactly where we want it. So you kind of have to play with it a little bit. If I go back to Inventor here, I say chamfer. My distance is just 1 inch. That angle here is still 50 degrees, which is what I want. I'll pick the face and I'll pick the edge. And it wants to chop off the whole edge, but we again, we don't want it. We just want the first, you know, the top 3 16 here. So notice what happens if I come over here and I use the partial option on the chamfer command. As soon as I click on partial, I get a little blue dot down here. Okay, so what I can do now is I can say, you know, from my start, if I click right here, and if I just click and drag, you'll notice that what I get is I get a little like part that's cutting out and then what I can do is I can take this top one and I can move it up and down or I can take this bottom one and move it up or down so now I could like I could do a chamfer right out of the middle so I've got you know an end part and a middle part that's chamfered and an end and you see here I've got start chamfer and end um, but I can make those anything that I want so for example if I come in here and I say uh, to the end uh, my chamfer is going to be 0.125 Notice how you know I've got a chamfer now. This is one is one eighth of an inch. If I were to make it bigger, for example, three sixteenths, one eight seven five. Notice now my chamfer here in here is three sixteenths. So the end is that, and then this one ninety two is the distance here. So if I come in here and I just make this zero, or I could even just pick this up and drag it to the top. Notice now that to the end is zero, okay, and I can come in and say my chamfer is 1875, okay, so basically what I want is that from the top corner to here is 3 sixteenths, and then the rest of it should be 7 sixteenths, 0.438. So I've got 3 sixteenths here and 7 sixteenths there. You kind of have to play with it a little bit. And like I said, you can come in and once you get it in place, you can drag it around and see how it'll change it. If I pick this top one again, I can come in and drag it around and change it again. So ultimately, get it to where it looks about right. Then change your chamfer distance here to 1875, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay. Um, oh, hang on. Okay, this one here. Um, Hang on. Okay, so 3 sixteenths. Okay, so I've got start to th there and then my end. And just kind of mess around with it and get it right. And you can say, okay. So then I've got my chamfers cut in. And again, be willing to play with that a little bit. Once you, uh, once you get it, it, it makes a little bit more sense. But you have, to, you have to play with it a little bit. So the last thing we have is to put this hole in and it's actually two holes it's it's a half inch drill through okay so it's going to go all the way through but then it's got a three quarter inch counter bore that goes three eighths of an inch deep and this is just one feature so to do that you use the hole feature and you're going to choose your surface that you want your hole to go on so I'll just pick that surface there now notice that right off the bat it tells me that my diameter is a half of an inch and it wants to go all the way through so that's great Let's start off by actually locating this hole. Uh, if I come back to the picture here, you'll see that it has to be 3 quarters of an inch from that front edge. So I will click that front edge, and you'll notice that it gives me an option here to change that distance, 0.75. So now it's 3 quarters of an inch off that front edge. 
And if we look at the image again, you'll see that it's to the center line of the hole, it's 3 eighths of an inch to that corner. Okay. So in order to get that, you'll do the same thing. I'll say that corner. Okay. So from the center of the hole to that corner, notice that it's putting in a 0.507. I actually want that to be 0.375. So when I picked that corner, it projected it to the surface there. So now it's exactly where it has to be, and it's a half of an inch, and it's going to go all the way through. But that's only half of it. It's just the whole part. Remember, I also want to have that counter bore. So you'll cho choose this section, second option on the seat right here. And once you choose that second option, it gives you more choices down here, which is now where we have to come in and say our counter bore has a 3 quarter inch diameter, and it's 3 eighths of an inch deep. So my counter bore now is 3 quarters of an inch, 0.75, and the depth of that is 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. So you can see that my hole, through hole is a half of an inch, the counter bore is 3 quarters of an inch, and the depth is 3 eighths. And you say OK, and it puts that in. And that is all there is to modeling the index feed.